Okay, we're back. So in this new video, what we're going to do is run the previous simulation, but outside this uh, workbench bubble. This is the way I like to do it. So to do that, remember that as you go back in the directory, in my case, it's seven everything here in test files. So as you go back here, you can copy all those files. So remember that you have the P0 here and in Sys1, here you have the mesh. So let me create a new directory to put everything. So I would call it new. Okay, not very <laughs> intuitive. But put it there. So let me copy. This will be the clean mesh. Okay. Then remember, so remember the, the properties auction in the workbench, you can see where it's located. But here in flu one, you have all the cases though. So this one is the one that you can Copy the settings. And here you see that you have the final solution. Okay, the dot that and also the setup. Okay, so let me copy these two also just to show you. Okay, so I copy my files. Okay, so at this point, let's do it. The mesh from scratch using the settings to set up and then I'm going to start I got not going to run, I'm going to start from this case just to show you. So if I go here that have here the student version, da, 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 da. it is fluent, okay? And remember here, you need to define if it is 2D or 2D, in my work case 3D, double precision, four cores, and then let me give the directory the location. It's located here, okay? So we're going to enter here. <laughs> Okay, so Fluent is launching. So see that, is, but, but it's very important that when you have the single, uh, the, the standalone uh, Fluent version, you are not using the all those options in the workbench, you, you are saving a lot of memory. Okay, so uh, this is why I recommend you, you are saving a lot of memory. Okay, and honestly, you need to get, to, to, to have all those options in the workbench, unless you are interested in doing parametrization or optimization, okay, but if you are, running single simulation, it's better to, to go into a stand alone fluent. Okay, so for instance, go here, read mesh and see that, get the mesh, reading the mesh, okay. And we have it there. So if I go here and let me put, plot the mesh, so it's like zoom in. Okay, edges, you select edges there and you can see the edges. So these arrows mean this is the inlet and the other one, this is the outlet, okay? So you have everything there, okay? So, and then remember you can go here, evaluate mesh qualities, you want you can increase the quality and you can change here the info, the, the mesh size, also the scaling. So always check this, okay, in 3D that you have the right dimensions. So, if we want to run this case, remember that we put here the settings files, this one that you generate in the workbench. So if you want to reduce the reuse that settings, you go here in the text user interface. So you can redo everything manually. Okay, there is no problem, it's up to you. But we have that file, so we can reduce that file. So it's file, enter, and see that is this option, read settings. Okay, so you go read settings. And the name of that file that is called C dash one set. So C dash one dot set. And it's reading that setting automatically. Okay, and ta -ta -ta -ta, it's doing this at the top, everything. And at this point, we're ready to go. We have everything. So as you start to look here, you will see that you have all your setup, everything has been defined. You have all the, your monitors. So at this point, you're ready to go. You go here, right? You call it, let me call it new. And as you press initialize, you choose your initialization. Okay. You are ready to go. Okay. So I'm not going to run this one. We already run it. We know the outcome. And here you run. So what I want to do now is just to show you the, that you can open just all some of the solutions. So see, see here that when we run the previous one, we save this one. This is the latest 
time. So you can open that one. So let me go here, read, and let me re read the data. Okay, so you read this one, the dot that, there you have the last solution, okay. So I can read that one directly because I know that the mesh is the same. So this mesh correspond to the same setup, but if you have different setups, it's better to, to read also the, the corresponding CAS file. Okay, so actually the, the proper way to do it will be read CAS, this is your case. So remember in the case you have your mesh and case setup. So kind of the same stuff like, like, like we did when reading the mesh and then reading the setting. And then you read the data and this is your last data. Okay, so if you go here, you will see that we have a solution there. Okay, so it's totally the opposite. And you can go here and you will see that you have the monitors. We can plot the monitors. We cannot plot this one because we didn't save the text file, but if you save the text file, you, you will be able to plot those those two. But we, we, we saw that the Y plus value was still oscillating a little bit. So let's keep running this simulation. So see that we don't need to start from scratch where we start from this one, the save it solution, and we can iterate. And so let's run from, from that latest state. So residual, let's switch off our residuals. Okay, everything switch off and run. So see that I don't need to initialize because I already have a solution. I go directly to run and let's run 100 iterations. If I press calculate and you see that all this setup, all the previous setup, you keep it. So as you go here, you will see that still you have the 100 saving frequency everything. Okay, you don't need to redo anything. So you press calculate and now you're going to run starting from the latest state from the state that you save it this one okay you see that see that it's starting from there so very helpful also okay you need to start to go back to zero just get the latest time step and keep running and in principle also you can do this one using different meshes so you can run in a quartz mesh and then interpolate the solution to a finer mesh and different domains you can do everything okay so those are advanced options that i know i'm not going to show you here but if you want to discuss that let me know but there are many advanced options okay so see here that in balance close to zero as we should expect but see that this one the the y plus is still it was oscillating a little bit it's small quantity but it's still oscillating but remember this y plus is also a data indication of wall shear stresses so let's see what happens when we run a hundred more iterations okay if these oscillations are reduced more okay so see that monitor everything so as I told you that this is not a data indication, it's a good converse solution. So maybe you, you, you have reached the 10 to the minus three, you know, uh, criteria that you set, but this one is still was a slayton. Okay, so now we're, we, we, we let it run. Okay, we switch, off, we switch off this tolerance value, and then we let it run to the maximum number of iterations, okay, to see what happens. But, but Again, as I mentioned, this is not a data indication. It, it is a good indicator, a good metric, but do not rely 100% of this. Always check some other metrics that these metrics are might telling you more about the behavior of what is going on in your simulation. So maybe let me go here and see that I have sub wind and view and I put everything there and I don't want to see this one here. I want to see this one. Okay, so I have all my windows there and see that you have all your monitors here. Okay, receive walls. Okay, the Y plus value and your imbalance. So here at this point, is saving the solution at 200. So as you go here, see that you should have, okay, the 200, why I don't see that. Da, 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 da. Okay, probably it's say, okay, it saved that. Okay, so see, see here that it saved that file. Okay, let me, later I will stop, but see that it saved it in this location. So I forgot to update that 
but if I go if I go here see here that you have the 200 okay but I forgot to update that location so these are small small stuff that also you should be aware of so ta -ta -ta, okay arrive here 100 iterations so see here that it saved the solution in this location okay but it saved it here because I forgot here when I go here see that if you open this one see here that in browns you have this location so usually also it's a good idea when you're moving files always check, check everything and put it in the new location okay but here is the location where it's saving so always check everything okay so write case data so let me write this one and should be new here and I call it new okay and this is the solution so see that this is a much better solution than the previous one okay let me tab view so see that it's starting to become flatter here you don't have any more those oscillations you can look at your solution so it will be let me rotate it like this okay so see that you have it there let me change the light in here okay so there's okay a little bit more advanced options so always i will show you a little bit more but just feel free to browse those so see that you have your velocity profile you can change whatever you're plotting there so for instance pressure put it there uh turbulence quantities turbulent kinetic energy and that's with pet here remember that you have here the wall function and you have this behavior okay so at this point what what i want to to do so the next set step will be here do this plotting okay so we're going to do this plotting outside uh fluent okay so how do we do this so this is very straightforward okay so remember that to do this plot okay you need to to to, to sample the wall shear stress at other location and also in a line you need to sample velocity and using these values you can compute all these quantities are you are ready to go so in my case i'm using python but it's one you can use matlab nuplot whatever you want even excel okay it's up to you so let me show you how to do that okay so remember in surface you create that line okay so i create it here in this case so you know your reference system you put it okay so remember that that line needs to be normal to to the point where you are located sampling so if you are sampling here next to be normal to that location okay so i have that line i know it's normal everything is okay so you go here into now plots it's why and you choose whatever you want to save so let's say that first i want to save velocity okay so see that you have your velocity profile remember here you can choose if you want cell center you deselect that cell center it you put it here no center so usually when you're saving the data it's better to save no center it okay but not much change so see that there is a difference between the profiles okay no and cell center okay but at the end of the day you get the same solution okay but usually i recommend you to to to, to get no notes values okay select the line what you want to save and then write order the points right here and then give it a name so i would call it usually i would call it, i know bell prof velocity profile and then save wall shear stress wall success ws and you that's all that is the only information you need so if you go back here see that you have these two text files you open this and this you have all the information along that line okay so see velocity profile you have all that information and then the wall shear stress so at the wall this is the wall shear stress that you are going to to use okay so at this point let's do that that post-processing in python let's move to python okay so we're going to read this file 
okay so you save it here but before moving there okay let me show you well okay now let's do it also in the next tutorial how to do it also here okay so we are also going to do it here in fluent remember that in fluent you need to create here the custom field sections so we're going to create those custom field sections in fluent so we're going to do two things in python okay so we're going to in the files okay in the data that you downloaded okay so you when you download the cases from the website see that you are going to also you you i'm going to put a link to download this plots data analysis okay so you you can download this information this information and this one and here you already have all the files okay so you have this directory where here you have the the python script to do this plot okay different data okay so see that here you have this python script or the jupyter now but see here that all, already saved the data in the line and that location so you have velocity and what should stresses as you go in data plot you have some other plots so here you 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 will find these plots okay so tor torvalent and, and laminar flow okay and then you enter in that sub directory you have different plots so you're going to find these plots and what is interesting here that i want to mention see what the different this is a laminar case but in this profile that the orange one see that the turbulence model was enabled and this is what i told you that it's not a good idea to run a laminar case with a turbulence model enabled because it may happen that it might add some diffusion like in this case it's adding some some diffusion that is something it's a large value it's like 10 percent that you are changing the velocity there okay so you have all the all the information so if you enter here y plus one is you open the case files you see the description y plus y y y p1 correspond to to these values and so on so but basically what i save 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 in the so you enter into any any directory see you have l10 this is the velocity so this is the velocity profile and ws this is wall shear stasis okay so using this information we are going to plot to construct these plots Okay, so we only need to sample what shear stress here, compute shear velocity, then with shear velocity, compute y plus along this line, and then also u plus, you compute it like this because you sample u along this line and then put, er put everything there. Easy peasy. Okay, so I think that, that that is all for this case. Okay, so now let's move to the advanced plotting. Thank you for your attention. See you next video. Bye.